My life in pictures, <laughs> or my bodybuilding life in pictures. What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioWestry Raw TV. What you're about to see right now, I went through these pictures, and we actually set up the office, and that's where I'm filming from it now. We have the new office set up. And come here, buddy. He's down here being a pain in the ass. You're going to hear him click, click, clicking all over the floor while I'm trying to do the thing, right? Daddy's trying to do his stuff, and you're click, click, clicking all over the floor, running around, because you like the office too now, right? You love the office. He loves it. So what we did is we set up the office and um, I went through, I found these thumb drives and stuff that had some old pictures and stuff on them, right buddy? You didn't see those old pictures of Daddy was big, did you? You didn't, I know. And he's like, I don't want to fucking sit here in this chair. Get out of here, buddy. Go play. You're good. And um, I decided to string them together because a lot of people ask, you know, do you miss bodybuilding? I absolutely miss bodybuilding. They want to know, you know, they know me what I look like now. They don't really know what I look like then. They don't follow my other social media. They have no idea what I did as a bodybuilder, where I came from, the things I did. So I figured... I put, you know, these pictures up and, you know, a lot of these YouTubers, cut out, buddy. A lot of these YouTubers only want to show you what they look like in, like, good lighting, perfect pictures, Photoshop. Some of these pictures are fucking made with fucking disposable cameras. They fucking suck. Cut out, buddy. They completely fucking suck. And I was like, you know what? That's real life, though. You know, this is real. I'm not going to hide who I am, where I've been. It's fucking legit. Sometimes I look better than others. And... It's just a fact. So I figured I'd put it out there. You guys can see I narrated the whole thing. The times when I fucking, you know, what years it was, what I placed. Sometimes what drugs I was using. All that stuff is in there. So I hope you guys enjoy this. It was pretty cool for me to go down memory lane and look at this. Some of these pictures I haven't seen in years. So check these out and um, enjoy. All right. We start out in high school. Here's my junior year. This is my buddy Henry. We used to actually work out at Gold's Gym together. We joined together and started training there. So this is about 130 pounds. Um, I'm about 16 years old here. I was putzing around in my basement, really not knowing a whole lot of what was going on. But this is when I was really starting to kind of like get into bodybuilding. I started like to roll up my sleeves and shit and try to show off my arms and <laughs> those little fucking twig arms. But this is where it all started pretty much right here. And that leads us into the first competition picture, which is 18 years old, 140 pounds, 100% natural, no steroids, didn't touch anything. So that was literally like a year of serious training and actually eating the right way. And, uh, you know, I got on stage here. I think this was the Gold's Classic um, in, um, I think it was in Massachusetts somewhere. But I think, I'm pretty sure this was the Gold's Classic, but 18 years old, 140 pounds, maybe like 143. I don't remember exactly what it was because it didn't go by weight. I was a teenager, and um, when you got past the teenagers, it actually went by height classes in the ANBC. So they didn't really care what your weight was. But as far as teenagers go, um, you know, I was told pretty much right off the bat that I had good shape, good symmetry. Decent muscularity, I just had to get harder. You know, that was like always my Achilles heel was getting shredded enough. And um, of course, I didn't carry any mass, but in natural bodybuilding, it didn't really matter. But um, I did this for like about two years in the natural leagues, and then I decided to jump on steroids, which led us to this photo 273 pounds in my basement, my parents' basement. Um, I went from 173 natural to 230 in 10 weeks. And then um, this probably right here, looking at this picture, this was the biggest I ever was. Um, my arms are just about 19 and 3 quarters. Calves are 19 and 3 quarters. Neck was 19 and 3 quarters. I don't know what my legs were, but they were, everything was pretty proportionate. I didn't give a shit how much fat I had on my body. Man, I was eating like crazy, and this is about as fat as I could possibly get. I was on insulin, growth hormone, dianabol, and anadrol together, testosterone, DECA. I mean, I remember... The amount of shit that I had to take to get here. And it's still not the amount of shit the guys take nowadays, to be honest with you. I think I only took about maybe five IUs of insulin twice a day. These guys nowadays are blasting like 10, 15 IUs. And this is what I was able to get to without, um, you know, taking the drugs to the next level. I was eating a fuck ton, drinking a gallon of milk a day. I mean, I could definitely say that I progressed faster because of the food with the drugs. No, hands down. This is actually back in 1996. So I started competing in, um, when I moved down to D.C., this is about a week or so out from the 2006 Body Rock, which was like the biggest regional show down here. I think I want to weigh in 193 for that show, so I was probably sitting about 196 right here. Um, I came down from about 230 pounds, and this was um, probably the first time I was really putting it all together as far as you know getting my diet and stuff straight when I was actually on drugs. Um, you know, when I first got on drugs, they blow you up, and I didn't really know that there's, you know, there is kind of a, a bit of a difference when you're on drugs. You can carry more muscle mass, you can eat more food. Um, they definitely help. I mean, they're not the be-all, end-all, but, I mean, they definitely help you maintain that muscle mass while you're dieting. So this was like that first year I was really starting to put it together. And um, 
you know, I was happy with the results. I was happy that I came in better than ever. I was really lean. My symmetry always, you know, my bone structure itself is really good. Here you can see the side chest. You can see like the hamstrings, the glutes, the legs. Everything was very proportionate. I wasn't overly big. There's no oil or anything in my arms or, you know, any body parts or anything like that. You can see my rear delt's actually kind of flat, which, you know, later on when I actually use the oil, you can see it starts to pop out a little bit. In this picture here, you can see, again, you know, the back was, you know, very symmetrical. You know, I had calves or a lot of guys didn't have calves. I'm starting to go bald, you can see up here. Not starting, but I'm pretty much balding at this point from the fucking steroid use and genetics. But I was, overall, I was really happy with the, uh, the results of this when I finally got to the stage because it was not only the best package I put together, but I actually worked with a coach that was, um, his name was Brad Hollibaugh. And, um, you know, he was one of the top national guys. And I got to kind of really prep for a show on drugs the right way for the first time. This is what I wound up like on stage. Um, could have been harder. You know, they sent this picture to Jay Cutler. And he told me, just get harder. Symmetry is good. Fullness was good. Um, I love what this picture. This is one of my favorite pictures I ever took. Just the color and stuff. And this is a stage shot from the Body Rock in 2006. Now we jump to 2007. This is getting ready for the Pittsburgh. Um, I was probably sitting at around 200 pounds here. Maybe a little bit bigger than 200 pounds. This is probably about two weeks out. Um, I remember I was sick when I took this picture. I'd been sick for about a week or two. Not, um, not nothing too crazy, not like a flu or anything, but I had like the head cold, chest cold bullshit that was going on. And I really had a hard time filling out. So I was getting harder and harder as the show came, but I was starting to flatten out even though I was eating a lot more food. And it was like this game of, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And I wound up using a diuretic called L-Dactone, which was the worst thing I could have done. Because you can see all these kind of sharp lines and stuff here now. All I needed to do was kind of dry out. And the aldactone didn't just make me dry out. It really, really flattened me out. And I couldn't carve back up. It was like the worst experience ever. And you'll see in the next picture that I put up here, I wound up being, I believe it was about 196 in this next picture on stage, but really smooth. I tried to get as full as I could, but I actually lost a lot of definition overeating. It was like pancakes and jelly and random shit like that to try to fill out. And it just, my stomach distended. It was just an awful time. So two weeks later, I actually worked with a coach for the Pittsburgh then. Two weeks later, this is the Lehigh. Now, this picture, the lighting on it absolutely fucking sucks. But I took my own prep over because I figured, you know what? I'm listening to a guy who really doesn't know what the fuck he's doing right now. I'm going to do my own prep. I have an idea of what I should do. I think I know better. And this is the physique that I produced two weeks later. I moved up a weight class to 199 pounds. And I was actually sharper and fuller. And the guy that actually trained me came out to the show. And he was like, wow, I don't know what the fuck you did. What I did was I did my cardio and then didn't do anything crazy last minute. So I tightened up a little bit, filled out ahead of time, and made sure that I wasn't using, uh, you know, aldactone, which I knew would fuck me up. I don't respond well to it, obviously, after the last show. And um, I did carb cycling for this. And what you'll see in the next picture, because obviously this is like the backstage shot, but these two pictures, this one and this one, are literally taken minutes apart. And that's the difference between lighting and what lighting can make. I definitely feel like this is one of my better looks that I ever had. I was super, super full. You can see the rear delts are actually full of oil right there. I did put synthol in the rear delts to get them to pop. I just remember thinking, like, you know, looking at this physique, I said, this is the best and most complete I've ever put it together. Now, what do I do from here? It's just a matter of I'm a heavyweight class. I barely missed the, the late heavyweights by, like, a quarter of a pound or something like that. I went in the heavyweights. I got second. I qualified for nationals as a heavyweight. I was super excited, so it was like, I need to get bigger. So let's see what I can do to get bigger. And of course, you, know, you still see the shape. The shape always maintains because it's bone structure, muscle bellies, insertions. The muscle just gets bigger or smaller, you know, but you maintain that overall genetic structure. And leading into this next picture, this is later that year, 2007 at the Maryland. That's me in the middle. I'm 232 pounds on stage now. So I gained, gained literally 33 pounds. Um, obviously not as tight, not my best showing, probably the most embarrassing showing I think I ever had. I wound up getting second at this show, qualifying for nationals as a super heavyweight. There was only three of us in the class. <clears throat> Excuse me. The guy next to me um, with the dark hair, that's Nico. He actually wound up winning. Um, he was a heavyweight who, when he saw that there was only me in the class at the time, the other guy hadn't checked in, he decided to drink water and make the, the super heavies to, uh, to try to win that class instead of battling it out with the heavies, which he wouldn't have fared as well in. So I wound up getting second to Nico. I deserved it. I didn't deserve it. I didn't, shouldn't have gone on stage that day, but, you know, I was testing the waters and 
trying to see what I can do. And, you know, I'm happy that I didn't get the experience in it, but I never wound up in the super heavyweight class again, which is actually where I belong, to be honest with you, size-wise, for my height. So here's about two weeks after that show at 255 pounds in the gym. I was, you know, it was one of those things where bigger is always better at that time, and I needed to get bigger to be competitive, and I wanted to go to the national level, and I wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. That was all my dream was, and I was going to do anything to get there. And this is actually not on any insulin. This was just steroids. I wasn't even on growth for this show. Um, I had actually stopped the growth hormone probably like six months beforehand because I couldn't get it. It was getting to be a time right around now in 2007 where there was Operation Gear Grinder and Operation um, whatever the other one is where they started busting all the labs. And all the pharmaceutical gear that was being used up by a lot of the pros and stuff, they couldn't even get Winstraw at the time. And because I remember some of the pros asking us for Winstraw and legit all the labs once they closed up you only had a few options left which led us for so this is using the real gear here you can see much downsize this is 2008 getting ready for the maryland every single fucking drug i got this year everything was fake nothing worked so i literally wound up going down and down and down and losing muscle and just trying to maintain what little muscle i had this is probably about four or five weeks out from the 2008 Maryland East Coast Championships. And um, there was really nothing I could do. I mean, I was training, I was eating, I was doing everything I could to try to maintain that muscle mass, trying not to overtrain, but trying to get lean at the same time while, you know, you don't have the assistance of the drugs. And, you know, things had to change. I had to really reduce my volume of my training. I had to reduce the intensity of the cardio of the diet. You know, my diet was always kind of spot on as far as contest shape, but off season it was very loose had i stayed leaner in the off season and not blown up as much i probably wouldn't have had to diet as hard which i probably would have been able to maintain some of that muscle mass even though there was no drugs around but the last three weeks before the show a buddy of mine who was actually doing the show and you know i was debating whether i was going to do it or not my girlfriend at the time was doing it so i felt obligated had wound up securing some prima bone so I wound up on 200 milligrams of Prima Bowling for that show in the long run, in the end. And I feel that it did definitely help me that last couple of weeks to maintain what little mass that I had left. And, you know, I, I don't, you know this kind of probably ties the super heavyweight um, look as far as my worst looks that I'm embarrassed about. I mean, some people look at this and say, hey, Jerry, it doesn't look bad. But this, this is not four weeks out. You shouldn't look like this four weeks out. This is a back shot. You can see, again, the structure is always there. It's still the same structure. It's still a good symmetry, just much downsized because of the fact that you don't have the drugs and you're trying to diet from blowing up so much in the off-season. Like, that was a big mistake that if I could go back now, I wouldn't blow up as big as I did. I would maintain a lower body weight so I wouldn't have to kill myself in cardio and, um, and you know, going like the low-carb road for so long to get into shape. This is what I wound up like on the stage after 200 milligrams of Prima Bowling for three weeks. And, um, you know, considering all, you know, all that I went through for that, I tore my forearm training for that show. I had to use strap in for everything. Couldn't train heavy, couldn't get any real drugs. I mean, I was disappointed in how I looked when I saw the pictures, but all in all, I look back now and I'm like, I'm surprised they even pulled that off, to be totally honest with you. It was one of those things where it was like, you know, I didn't even think that good a shape would have happened. And now this picture right here, is four weeks after that. I obviously got some real steroids at that point. This is just testosterone. I literally just got my hands on this testosterone. Two cc's, which was 400 milligrams of testosterone. And I went from that body weight, which I believe was at about 190 pounds, to 235 pounds here. It was 235, 240. I always kind of like range there when I, I would push the testosterone dosages in. This is literally 400 milligrams after not having anything for literally five or six months in your system. You get back on that test, and or for me, testosterone always just made me grow like a bitch. I would just fucking blow the fuck up very quickly. Of course, not super hard, not muscular, but full, thick, you know, strong, feeling good. Here we go into 2009. The following year, obviously, the steroids were back. <laughs> and uh, this is the Pittsburgh heavyweight division. This is when I worked with Kevin Lavroni. You can see symmetry and stuff is there. I weighed in 199 pounds. Made the heavyweight class, got fourth out of like 15 guys, top-notch guys, great show. You can see my legs are actually lighter than my upper body. We had a very hard time getting the tan on. My legs are actually harder than that. But, you know, overall, I felt like this was probably my best, fullest, overall, symmetrical, leanest look. 
Um, everything was just there. You know, I was told by Rich Gaspari that if my tan was better, I would have actually placed higher because you couldn't see the muscularity of my legs very well. But you could see it up close, but it, it was just washed out. Like, we had a tanning mishap. My body wasn't soaking up the protein. It was really fucking awful. But the idea was, you know, to, to come in as big and full as I could and then dry out overnight. Whereas most people try to fill out. I actually filled out ahead of time. I literally, on the ride up to Pittsburgh, ate, like, shit. It was, like, fucking 12 meals in, like, seven hours with two gallons of water. I was so full I couldn't fucking move. I thought I was going to pop. And then I dried out overnight. We actually used a, a diuretic. Um, I don't remember exactly which one it was, but it wasn't Eldactone. And I dried it out overnight. This is what I wound up looking like on stage the next day, which I was very happy with. Fourth place at the Pittsburgh was pretty much a win for me. Coming from where I came from and having the setback the year before, you know, I was just happy to be in the mix at all. And, you know, placing fourth next to those monsters who were two inches shorter and weighed out 25 pounds more than me really, really was cool. Here we are in June. So that show was in May. This is June at the Maryland. I dropped back down to the um, light heavyweight champ uh, light hit championships, light heavyweight class again. I believe this is about 196 pounds here. You can see I adjusted the posing a little bit differently here to give like a more of aesthetic pose because I knew it would be a little bit smaller. But I was still one of the bigger guys in the light heavyweight class. So I'd usually top out the light heavyweights full, but could always bring a little bit more hardness. And, you know, that's the thing is when my physique gets hard, I come down in weight and I lose that fullness. When I lose that fullness, I knew I'm not competitive. I'll be harder, but I'm not competitive. So to be competitive in all these classes, I would come in a little bit fuller, not as hard. And, you know, the knock would always be Jerry come in a little bit harder. And I'm like, when I try to come in harder, it just, I flatten out and I never could get that balance. So I would err on the side of coming in a little bit fuller and let my symmetry kind of overpower some of the guys that were bigger or harder. I was better shape. You know, I had more, better symmetry. I'd hit my poses good. I was always a good poser. And, um, you know, that would kind of carry me over and beat some of the bigger or more shredded guys, which, you know, so let's face facts. There's always going to be somebody more shredded. There's always going to be somebody bigger. But, you know, if you can come in with a good overall combination, you're going to beat some of those guys. So here is 2012. That's my off-season, like 230, 235 pounds. That's the shape I was maintaining off-season, which is pretty lean for an off-season. You can see full set of abs. My legs were hard. Symmetry was still good. I mean, I probably could have stayed a little leaner, but, you know, calves always there. And what I did was I slowly came down over about 12 weeks. I first started working with Phil Hernan. This is about a 12-week prep with Phil. And I wound up at about, so this was 2012. So I was in the light heavyweight class at about 196 pounds again. So on the left, 235, the right, 196, which um, you can see I lost some size in my legs. Had to do a little more cardio than I wanted to to be able to get the, you know, those kind of the final deeper cuts to come in. But, you know, all in all, I was happy with this because I was, you know, definitely harder, but I was a little bit downsized. Drug-wise, was a lot less than when I was on for the Pittsburgh and the Maryland. I was already kind of seeing the writing on the wall that I can't gain the amount of size I need to be competitive at the next level. So let me see what I can do with a, a more, and this is before Classic Visi came along, but I was like, let's see what I can do with my strengths, which are symmetry, shape, in a more classic physique. Maybe I can beat some of those, you know, much, much bigger guys if, because I had been beating some of them. So I'm like, maybe if I just stick with my own formula, you know, I'll be able to beat them. And I didn't know they would be coming out with classic physique later. Here, this is two days before the show, after we started the carb up. You can see I'm actually in better shape than I was the night before the show. When, um, you know, when I start to pull water too much, which I don't pull water now until the last minute, like the night before the show. When I start to pull water a little bit early, I flatten out and I lose that pop. So I'm just as lean as I was in the other picture, but I look even leaner because I'm so much fuller. This is, um, I actually was carving up on pineapple and mango and cantaloupe here, of all things, which people would say, you know, Jerry, don't eat fruit. But that's what we did with Phil. Phil had an all fruit diet. I listened to whatever he said. I ate when he, whenever I was hungry. I was eating tons of food here to fill out. And um, overall, I felt like this was probably... You know, a good combination for one of those classic, quote-unquote, Lee Labrada, Bob Paris type looks, which, you know, that's what my physique is. You know, classic physique, I think, is where I would fit in nowadays, but they just, they didn't have anything like that back then. And here we have the difference between 2012 on the left, the night before the show, and 2013, the night before the show. On, um... This was the, the Maryland on the left and the Delmarva, Delaware on the right. This was me really trying to push the conditioning because uh, Alberto Nunez and um, 
that uh, that other girl, I forget her name, she had um, kind of, they made fun of me saying I never, I'm never in shape. I always look like I'm like 10 weeks out. I said, you know what, I'm just going to get as shredded as I possibly can and whatever weight I wind up, I wind up. And I think I was about 181 pounds right here on the right. So I went from like 190 something to 181. I came down, this is before I was carving up. You know, I was dry. You can actually see the skin folds in the bottom of my chest, which is important to pay attention to those right here. Because in the next picture, what you're going to see is after I started the carb up, you'll see that those skin folds actually disappear in this picture here. So that's the difference between a flat muscle and a full muscle. This is less than 24 hours later. I'm on stage at the Delaware. I wound up getting second again, which, you know, this was very disheartening to me because I came in the hardest one in the whole show, full. I felt like um, I had won that show. And, you know, I was told by the judges that, you know, I had like my quad tear was, um, you know, very distracting, which I didn't have a quad tear. So I don't know what the hell they were talking about. But, you know, I felt like I brought, you know, my my most shredded package that I'd ever bought, brought. And that was always the knock. Jerry, you're not shredded enough. Well, I got beat by a guy who was not as shredded, who didn't have glutes, who wasn't tight, but was bigger. So that's when I started, took a step back. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. You know, I really pushed myself to get shredded. That was the knock on my physique. I got beat by a guy who was like five or six pounds bigger with a watery ass. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And uh, you can actually see in this picture here, this is my back shot at that show. Conditioning was on point. I was the only one in that class that had glutes like that. And, you know, my hamstrings are tight. I had calves. I had forearms. I had traps. I mean, I had all the body parts that I felt like was a winning combination and got beat out. So I got pretty depressed and I decided not to do the show the week later ate McDonald's, ate ice cream, and you see this picture here. This is the result of Thursday night before the show after eating McDonald's for like three days, nonstop, eating all kinds of junk food, cake, ice cream, all this crap. The Thursday night before the show, I talked to Sean Ray. This was his show, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to go one last hurrah, fuck it. Pulled my water the last minute, went on stage, and this is the result of the last bodybuilding show that I was ever in. This show, I had the most fun ever. I knew it was going to be the last show I was going to do. I knew that I couldn't produce the type of physique that would do better on the next level for my height. I went out there, did my routine, and I didn't really know Sean at the time. And he was like, you know, I was in the elevator with him, and he was like, that was a really good routine, man. You know, you didn't place where you wanted to. But, you know, hearing him say that really put a, a smile on my face. And, um, you know, this was, this was it. This was my swan song. This was my final form on stage as a competitive bodybuilder. This was 20 years after I started um, in high school. This was 2013, Sean Ray Classic. A light heavyweight, so I waited in at 196 on the button here. And that leads me into the final show I did this year as physique. This is my final form now.